Hello and welcome to this year's Year 7 Information Evening. I'm Thomas Sullivan, the Head of School for Year 6 and 7, and I'll be your host tonight. Um, ideally, we'd like to be in our auditorium, having that personal touch, getting to meet and greet you and welcome you to the college in Year 7. Uh, but as we've done all year, we'll continue to make the best out of the situation that we find ourselves in. Tonight, we're going to be introducing you to some of the college leadership and middle school leadership team to talk about how we can help support your child in transitioning into year seven at Hazel Glen College. There's no need to make notes or take photos of the information that's provided. It'll all be sent out via email at the end of the presentation. At the end of the session, we'll be running a Q&A session. Um, so if you post your questions in the chat, we'll get to them at the end. Firstly, I'd like to welcome our college principal, Anthony Stockwell, to welcome all the families to year seven at Hazel Glen College. Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to tonight. It certainly is a, um, a unique experience standing in an empty room in front of a screen, uh, but it certainly has become the norm for us all. So hello to all of our Year 6 students and parents uh, to tonight, and a very sp uh, special and warm welcome to our new students and families who are joining the Hazel Glen uh, community in 2021 next year. It is certainly exciting to have you on board. What a week it's been for us. We have got students back on site, and I'm sure there's many smiles on parents' faces that your children have returned to on-site learning. Um, it's been a tough year. Words, I think in time, will come maybe clearer to us all around how we actually process what we've experienced this year and the challenges that have come from it. Um, I hope in time that we can certainly take a moment to think about the things that we've actually gained from this experience instead of always what we've lost. It's certainly the message that we are trying to continue to share and reinforce and talk with our students and families and staff about. Um, but it has been an amazing week to have students back on site. Over the last six months, I've been on site a fair bit and I've wandered the, the schoolyards and the classrooms and it's an empty vessel. I didn't get in this job to work like this. None of our teachers did, ha, have done. And as you walk through the yards and there's no noise, there's no interaction, there's no laughter, it is something that has been a real challenge for all staff. The part that is very difficult, we know that we are in the relationships business. And one thing that does not happen is build relationships through a screen. I'm sure many parents would be agreeing with me when we see our children on technology way too much. But the heartbeat has returned, students are back on site, and so are staff. Tom, if you could just go back one slide, please. This is a picture here um, of um, one of our teachers applying for a leading teacher position a few years back. As she came into the interview, this is um, Emma Nima, and she's brought this marigold. And I'm not sure if how many people have, have ever heard of the marigold effect. Marigolds are planted near vegetables early on and they support growth. They fight against weeds and they stimulate greater strength of growth in their roots um, and, and in their pro uh, production of, um, of fruit and vegetables. The marigold effect is common around the talk in uh, educational worlds around surrounding yourself with people who have positive influences on you. Why I say this at the moment is that I reckon parents have played a significant marigold effect at the moment over our recent times with the impact that they've had on children. You have had to play mum and dad roles. You've had to play the teacher role, the disciplinarian role. And we've had to cater for all aspects of, of life over the last six months. What I say to you is that um, that is time to come back and share the importance of um, the load that it takes to raise a child. Thanks, Tom. Next slide, please. Can I say thank you for trusting us uh, in the decision of sending your children to Hazel Glen College? I put the decision up there with some of the big ones in life, like buying your first house and marriage, that the school that you choose for your child in the second stage of their educational life from, you know, they've completed the seven years coming up to, and they've got six years to go. And the decision of of trusting us with your children on their second year, year uh, second stage of their journey uh, is not made lightly. And to all of the families that have uh, put in the effort and time 
to make sure that this school is the right one for your child, I say thank you. Our big focus at Hazelglee is about the holistic development uh, of a child. We understand that the physical, social, emotional uh, aspects of learning and growth are as important as the cognitive development. What I, uh, what I, I share with all parents is that please don't compare your children to anyone else. We know when we grow older that everybody's unique, everyone's got their own pathways, but one of the common things that happen as we go through school is that we compare our children to other children. We've seen it in, we see it in sport, maybe a little bit more common, but in school it happens the same. If someone's reading better or writing better or better at maths or people who are building great relationships, all kids grow at their own pace and time. And it is our job to facilitate every individual's growth and timelines around their learning. One of our educational opportunities extend far beyond the walls of Hazel Glen and over the journey from year 7 to year 12, you are going to see this in abundance. What we have realised that learning does not need to happen inside four walls and the opportunities that your children are going to be presented with at Hazel Glen are going to be amazing. One thing I'd say is that it's hard to realise an opportunity until it's been missed. And when they are presented uh, to you, I would say please uh, have a go at everything. This slide in front of you shows one of the most critical decisions, I'll reinforce the, reinforces the decision that you've made to send your children to Hazel Glen. This is book week for us. This is around 150 of our staff representing book week. I have the best job in the world simply because I have the opportunity and, and are fortunate enough to work with these amazing professionals who are passionate and care deeply about children. This is, and I've, we've often talked over the, over the past few months that now, education is more than just a career or a profession. You know, you are deeply invested you know, uh, with the people you work with and the students and the lives that, uh, and influence you have on the students in your care. We have an acronym at Hazel Glen called MAD, M-A-D. It stands for Make a Difference. And the teacher's commitment always to engage students and make a difference, a positive difference in their life is something very important to us. The last one that I will leave you with, thank you, Tom, the next slide. And you're going to hear this a lot from us. This is about the importance of relationships. The picture uh, on my left uh, is um, in 2007. This is in um, the Kimberley area of Western Australia. This is a sister school in Billaluna. Uh, this was in our inaugural year that I was fortunate enough to attend. Um, and on our right is uh, our student captains from junior school, middle school and our college captains. Opportunities are everywhere, but it is about the relationships that we build with our students. What I say to you as parents, stay connected. We know through the adolescence period that students want to start developing more independence throughout their journey, but they need you. Now, they may not say it or show it, but it is a critical time in their life that we stay connected. The next six years, I'd say buckle up. It is an absolutely amazing ride that they are about to go on. And like all journeys, it is full of success stories and some challenges along the way. What I would like to reinforce is that we're on your side. We want exactly what you want, parents, the best for your child. And if we stay connected, then the chances of succeeding in this are greatly amplified. Um, can I say thank you? I look forward to uh, spending time with you over the coming years to celebrate the success of your children and I hope that the journey of their secondary education uh, is filled with success. Thanks very much. Thanks for the wise... Come on. Thanks for the wise words, Anthony. I'd now like to introduce Carolyn Bamberg, our middle school principal, to discuss the unique model at Hayes Glen College. Thanks, Tom. Uh, my name's Carolyn Bamberg. I'm the middle school principal at Hazel Glen College. Look, I just want to start off by saying how proud I am of the college um, and how proud I am of the middle school team. And today I just want to spend a couple of minutes talking about what the middle school team and the middle school is all about for your kids going into year seven next year. So um, I might go on to the next slide, please, Tom. Um, what we know about the adolescent brain and, um, is that it is going to be um, exploding during these years. You can see on this little, screen, this little slide here that um, we call this the second window of opportunity. 
So if you know when your kids were learning to walk and talk when they were, um, you know, two and three, we could see the changes so closely and we were so astounded about how our kids grew up. Now this is happening to your kids right now. Their brain will never be as big as it is right now. Um, it's going through an enormous development and it's choosing what to keep and what to, to pass up. You'll see the obvious physical changes um, in your, your child in the next couple of years, but the biggest change will happen inside their head. And it's so important for us to know this really innately and to be able to cater for these kids as they're going through this change. Some other things that you may not know about what's going on in their brain in these years is they're starting to develop some abstract thinking and they're questioning the world and questioning themselves. So this is an enormous opportunity for us um, to help them, um, you know, explore, explore their world, to expand their horizons um, and to start thinking really critically and creatively. They also develop a sense of identity during this time and their social circle, you probably already know, is uh, paramount, is the most important thing in their lives. Um, this, is, this, this is normal and very healthy and if we can work together in these years, we can ensure that they have the values and the social skills to be able to uh, flourish in later years. Next slide, please. But as Mr Stockwell said, it's not going to be easy. Our kids will struggle at times, will struggle at times, um, but um, we know it'll be worth it. So when we talk as educators, we sometimes refer to the stretch zone. So um, when we have kids in their comfort zone, um, you may have seen it during remote learning, you may not have seen it, um, is that, you know, things are easy for them. They're, they're not, they're low challenge, things are comfortable, very little learning happens during this time. The opposite end is the panic zone. Um, and that's really high challenge, high stress. And again, no learning happens. We want our kids to sit as much as possible into the stretch zone. We want them to struggle in their learning. We want them to experience conflict um, and have some good days and some bad days because this is when they'll learn how to effectively manage this for themselves. Our role as parents and teachers is to help guide them. And as um, Anthony said, be the marigold that sits alongside them and give them the skills and the tools to make the right decisions when it comes to doing it alone. So how can we do this together? Well, um, the first things we need to do is, as um, Anthony said, stay connected. Um, we need to really work together closely and um, stay up to date with all the things that come out of the school, but also we'd love to know if things are happening. You, got, you have spent the most time with your child in the last six months. You know them so well, and so we can't wait to talk to you to get to know them better. We also encourage you to be present in their lives. As Anthony said, they will need you so much. Um, and we can't, and we, they will need us as well. So being present in their lives and, and um, asking about their day um, and, and being involved in, in what they're doing each day. We will focus on their social and emotional learning. We'll focus on their literacy and numeracy. Um, and we would love it if you can work with us on those things. Of course, during these years, we all know as parents and as educators that these are the years where social media becomes a battlefield. Um, and so making sure that we work together around that to help them make the right choices in that um, environment is super important. Thanks, Tom. Next slide. And I can't, I'll be remiss if I didn't mention um, what Anthony referred to and what's all on our minds is around COVID-19. This is a map that you may have seen before of all the uh, countries in the world where there have been shutdowns of schools um, this year due to COVID-19. Uh, whether it's red for the countrywide closures um, or where we are, partial school closures um, in different parts of the country at different times. What they estimate is 87% of the world, um, world's students have had interrupted school in this year. What's the good news about this? Well, everybody has been affected. Not maybe different degrees, but every child has been affected. And so we can work together to ensure we have a strong approach, um, a well-grounded and evidence-based approach. And we know that we can still reach our students at their point of need. I know as the college principal of the middle school principal, sorry, that um, we are so, so equipped to help our students at their point of need. 
We have really strong pedagogy and curriculum practices. We have a really supportive environment. We have great relationships with our kids and we have open communication with our families. Most importantly, this week and the weeks to come, we're really focused on making sure our kids feel happy, confident and ready to learn because that's what needs to happen before any learning can occur. So I just wanted to ease your minds that, you know, this you are not alone in your fears around COVID-19 and um, teachers and this college are working really hard to make sure we have the right structures in place to support your child wherever their needs may be. I'll pass it on to you, Tom. Thanks, everybody. And we look forward to meeting everybody next year. Thanks. Thanks, Carolyn. I'd just like to remind everyone watching along at home that if you do have any questions um, that pop up throughout the presentation, please use the chat feature to ask them and we'll address them at the end of the session. I'd now like to take this time to introduce our Assistant Principal of Operations, Kim Donnelly, to talk about what to expect as your child enters Year 7 at Hazel Glen College. Thank you, Tom. Welcome. Can I start by welcoming our current and our future Hazel Glen families? My name is Kim Donnelly and I'm the Assistant Principal for Operations in Middle School. And as Tom just said, I'd like to just give you an overview of what to expect as your child enters Year 7 next year. The next slide, please. We want all students to thrive. So in order for students to be successful and thrive at school, it's essential that we have the right preconditions for learning. This means that they feel connected socially and emotionally. It means that they feel safe and secure in their learning environments and that they have a positive attitude towards their learning. At Hazel Glen College, we invest a lot into setting up all of these preconditions for our students for their learning. The core of this is setting up positive relationships. So for this to be possible, it's vital that there's a partnership between home and school and that we have open communication. As students enter this stage of learning, the key to success is in the connection between students, their carers and the school. Nobody knows your child better than you do. So the more that we can work together, the better we can support your child. We encourage parents to keep in contact with teachers and other staff at the college about changes and concerns at home so that we can work with you to bring the best possible learning environments for your child. Next slide, thank you. And as you are aware, Hazel Glen College is a large school. And for some people that can be daunting. What we want to do is assure you that we have the structures in place at a range of different levels to ensure that every child is supported at whatever their point of need might be. We are fortunate enough to have a very well resourced wellbeing model in place. The first point of call for all students is their home group teacher. They see them every morning when they start the day with their home group to set up, when I was talking about those preconditions, the first one that students have each day is their home group. It's a time to set themselves up for the day, make connections with their teachers, with other students in their class. The home group teacher will support the day-to-day -day concerns and any other um, worries or issues that the child might have about school. And students can approach them at any time with concerns they might have. They might come into home group five minutes early and have a little chat about something that might be bothering them or a concern, or um, they might need help with their locker or their timetable. And the home group teacher will step them through that. From here, we have a scaffolded support structure, depending on the individual needs of each child at that point in time. We have two year level leaders working at each year level to support the home group teachers and work with students on things that are a little bit more of a higher need. Working to support the year level leaders, we have our head of school and you've been introduced to Tom Sullivan earlier this evening. He is our head of school for year six and seven. Working above them is myself working in as the assistant principal of operations. And then we have the middle school and college principals. So depending on the needs of a child, there's a well scaffolded range of supports that are available for them. Working alongside them, we've got our college wellbeing team, which is led by Mrs. Nicole Stockwell across the college. We also have a wellbeing leader that works with students just in year seven and eight. 
They support student wellbeing. They provide advice around a range of wellbeing and mental health concerns. And they work closely with students and families if needed. So you can see that yes, we are a large college, but there are strong supports at whatever level your child may need. And what we ask again is that you please make sure that you contact the people I've just spoken at, depending on the point of need, if you ever have any concerns. Sometimes the students are reluctant to raise concerns. They might be embarrassed, they might not want to. So please feel confident that you can contact any of our wellbeing and support services at any time for support uh, with your child. They don't care to learn unless they learn that we care. And it's such an important statement. At this stage of adolescence, students need to know that their teachers care about them first and foremost. And that's the critical precondition for learning. They might not show it, and we know that, but they do want to know that we care. If we ask the students, and we ask them quite often, they would say in their words, they would like the teachers to be fair. The key to this is consistency. We have consistent processes and approaches across the college. So the students can be confident no matter which class that they're in, they will have the same consistent approach to learning. Yes, teachers will bring their own personal touch and their own, their own flair, but the expectations of our students are the same no matter which class that they go on to. So there's no confusion, there's clear expectations and we can be fair for the students. We know that students will push the boundaries. We know students in year seven and beyond, they're going to push the boundaries. And we know that they're going to make mistakes and they're going to make bad choices from time to time. And as you've heard before, that is part of adolescence and that is part of how they learn. When they do though, we are there for them. And we're there with that fair, consistent approach. We make sure that we address the behavior, not the child. It's not the child that, um, has done th that we address, it's the behaviour. We, you have done something that we address rather than the child itself. And we look at the ways of moving forward. We address the concern and the behaviour and we move forward with that as well. And that's the way, the precondition that they don't care to learn unless they learn that we care. Students at Hazel Glen College learn very quickly that their teachers are here for them and they're there for them when they need them and they do care for them as well. Our college values. Some of you may be familiar with this, some of you may not. So we have four core values that go across the college from kinder through to year 12. Respect, relationships, responsibility, and resilience, our four R's. And I can say that during this time of remote learning, the students have lived these, these values, the resilience and the responsibility. Um, we never expected the students to have to show this level of resilience and responsibility, but it has just been incredible. And we've been so proud to see students show their values at this point in time. So these values are upheld not only by the students, but by the staff and the college community. We don't just put them on the wall and every room you can see on the wall behind me, Every room has the values up, but we don't just put them on the wall and hope that students will follow them. They are embedded in everything that we do. They're values that we expect our students to live by, not only at school, but in everything that they do. If they can achieve this, if they can show those four R's in everything that they do, believe me, they're going to be well on their way to being successful adults who make such a positive contribution to their community. Year seven camp. I must admit in the time I've been here, this is my favorite camp. I have been on this camp every year in the time I've been here. We've, I think it's run for six or seven years. Unfortunately, really unfortunate that we weren't able to run camp this year. So each year our year sevens go to the Grampians and you can see the dates on the screen. We do have two separate camps because of the number of students that we have. We want them to have a quality experience on the camp. So we have two separate camps for them. There is more information in the packs that you will have sent to you as well. It is an incredible opportunity for all students. Such an amazing, you can see some of the photos there of what the students do on that camp. 
but it also provides an opportunity for students to build connections with other students and with staff outside of the classroom environment and see them in a whole different light, which is amazing. They come away with new friendships as well. For year seven, they may have spent the first few months only with students in their homeroom. It gives them an opportunity to make all these other connections and meet like-minded students as well. It is such an incredibly rewarding camp as well. They are physically and mentally challenged at times, and you can see by some of the pictures there, um, there are some challenges and we do expect them to step out of their comfort zone sometimes. They are encouraged to take that risk and step outside and do things that they might feel a little bit frightened or unsure about, but they get lots of encouragement and support along the way. But there's nothing more rewarding than that sense of achievement when they have made it to the top of the abseiling or the top of the ropes course. The, the sense of achievement in doing something that they didn't believe that they could do, whether it's a, a big or a small achievement, we celebrate those. And to see the sense of pride that somebody, they may have only made it halfway up the abseiling, but that's a, if that's a big step, we will celebrate that. And there's such a sense of pride with the year seven camp of students having the opportunity to show their strengths and make these achievements outside of the learning environment. Um, the teachers are so proud of what they achieve on this camp and the students come back, they're tired. It's a five day camp, they're exhausted by the end of it, but just raving about how much they've done and what they're, they've achieved. And they're so proud that they've abseiled or they've got a bullseye or they've jumped off the the top of the, uh, the leap of faith when they do the ropes course. Um, so it's an amazing camp and we encourage all students. It is an expectation that students do uh, attend the camp. We don't have a program running back at the college uh, while the camp is on. It's an expectation that students attend the camp and there are details including payment uh, plans inside your pack as well but an amazing opportunity. I cannot speak higher of the year seven camp that they do. Our college uniform. Now, normally at this time of the evening, if we were in the auditorium, we would have some of our college students presenting and modeling our uniform for us. Unfortunately, we can't have that tonight. So I have got some photos of our college captains or our middle school captains in the different uniforms. So. We have a summer uniform and you can see Abby in our summer uniform and that is worn in terms one and four. We have a PE uniform. You can see Cohen wearing the spray jacket as part of the PE uniform. And the PE uniform is worn for two days. They wear it to school. If they've got PE on the day, they wear it for the whole day. They don't change in and out of uniforms. They wear their PE uniform for the whole day when they do have PE on that day. So. We will help students get used to reading their timetables, but they will need to look, plan when they have PE and when they wear their PE uniform. In terms two and three, they wear their winter uniform. And you can see our college, our middle school captains, Cooper and Lishane, wearing the winter uniform there. All year sevens wear blazers, of course, not with their PE, but for their summer and winter uniforms, they will wear blazers. You can see the black hazel glen blazer there and they do wear a tie with their winter uniform as well. As part of our uniform expectations, we also have expectations that hair will be tied back um, and that they don't wear jewellery or makeup as well. We have a lot more details in our information pack regarding uniform, black lace up shoes and the requirements. We do take great pride in our uniform and we expect our students to wear it with pride as well. We do think that it is an amazing looking uniform and we expect all students to wear our uniform with pride. Thank you for joining us tonight. I do look forward to actually meeting all of you when we can, and I look forward to welcoming you all to our college community. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. Um, as, as Kim said, we weren't able to have our middle school captains join us here this evening. However, they were kind enough to spend their time and put a presentation together about their experience within the middle school and the opportunities that were provided to them here.
Hi, my name is Lejeune and I'm one of this year's middle school captains. Even though this year probably didn't go quite as planned, it gave me a chance to reflect on my middle school experience. Let me tell you something, it definitely wasn't sunshine and rainbows. Probably had more ups and downs than I could probably imagine. Some of these ups and downs were probably easier to go over and overcome than others. If there was one tip I could give anyone going into middle school or year 7, it would be to keep a positive attitude because it will make your life 100 times easier. Trust me. In middle school, we have a wide variety of different clubs to suit everyone's different interests. These clubs help you make positive connections with peers, which can seem like a daunting task in such a large school, where some students have already spent a number of years here and know a lot of people, where other students could be coming into the college not knowing anyone. One club that I enjoyed going to was Movie Club, which was held every Friday. I definitely felt a difference when I transitioned from Year 6 to Year 7. There was a complete different expectation for us, and a complete different vibe. We were expected to act more responsible and mature, which was a little bit hard for us, but it didn't mean that the teachers were strict or harsh in any way. Instead, they were more understanding and calm, since we had just moved up from primary to secondary school. What I will say to anyone nervous about moving into Year 7 is you really never know what's going to happen. No one knows when you'll have another pandemic or lockdown, clearly. So no matter what happens, give everything your best shot and try to stay positive. Try to be there for anyone who needs it, because in the end, you'll look back and you'll think of some of your best memories that were made in middle school or Year 7. Hi, I'm Cooper Spark, middle school captain for 2020. My middle school experience was an interesting one to say the least. I came to Hazelden College as a Year 7 student, which was the beginning of my middle school journey. Straight away, I realised how many opportunities there were and how exciting this experience would be. I was honoured to be given the role of middle school captain and even though this year has certainly been a challenging one, I believe there have been so many lessons we have learnt along the way. In 2019, I was also chosen to be the Beachley Vice House Captain, which was a lot of fun and set me up for a great year. I would recommend putting your hand up for these opportunities as they come about because it really does make your middle school experience even more enjoyable. The teachers in middle school have been so awesome and made our learning fun along the way. The Year 7 camp to Halls Gap was such a blast. There were so many activities to do and lots of adventures to go on. We did lots of hiking and had so many laughs and friendships were developed. This was great fun. Make sure your legs are ready for a 12k hike. For me, my emotions were through the roof from the transition to year 6 to year 7 and felt a whole range of emotions. I walked into the classroom and I could only see complete strangers except for two people. I already knew. Eventually, I got to know everyone. I came from different schools too. I started school at Lorimer Primary in Grade 4. This is because I moved from Queensland. From Grade 4 at Lorimer to Grade 6, I stayed in the same school until I moved to Hazel Glen for high school. Overall, the transition went smoothly and quickly. Some bonus stuff that I've been doing along the two years here would be Principal of the Day, where I got to be chosen for Mr Stockwell's job as Principal. Lejeune also applied to and got Middle School Principal. Hi, I'm Cohen and I'm the, middle uh, I'm the Vice Captain of Middle School at Hazelgan College. I have had a really positive experience throughout my time in middle school. Some of my favourite memories are definitely camps. In year 7 we went to, into the Grampians where we did hiking, a ropes course and a team building exercises that really allowed you to get to know the other students in the year level and build strong relationships for years to come. For those that have a passion for sport, the Athlete Development Academy is an amazing opportunity and experience that I have loved. I'm going into my final year of the three year program. This program has challenged me physically and mentally, but has helped me to become a better person and an athlete. I know coming into year seven can be daunting, but I have nothing but positive memories and experiences throughout my time in middle school. I'm sure that you'll all enjoy your time here at Hazelgan College as much as I did. Hi, I'm Abby, one of the 2020 middle school vice captains, and I'm going to be talking to you about my middle school experience. 
During middle school, I had the opportunity to take part in lots of extracurricular activities. I've spoken at assemblies, joined and performed in the middle school choir, auditioned and performed in several college musicals, auditioned and took part in Wakakiri, competed in the Tournament of the Mines, applied for and was selected for captaincy positions, joined the swim team, took part in student voice meetings and attended camps. And these are only some of the things you can do in middle school. You can try out for sport, join the choir, take part in lunchtime clubs, join one of the many school bands, apply for captaincies, go on a variety of camps, participate in school performances or musicals. Speaking of camp, Year 7 camp is one of the best camps in middle school and is my personal favourite. In Year 7 camp, you are able to go on a five day camp to the Grampians where you have the opportunity to climb Bear Rock, abseil, explore a local community, have disco parties, movie nights, take a leap of faith and the highlight of camp, the pinnacle hike to see the most beautiful view. Coming into a school as big as Hazel Glen and making the transition from Year 6 to 7 can be a daunting idea to think about. But I promise you, it could not have been any easier. Your home group gives you the opportunity to meet new people. Your homeroom teacher can help make your transition as smooth as possible, along with your year level coordinators and middle school principals. I promise you that you will be just fine. So I'd like to say a massive thank you to our middle school captains. They have done and continue to do an amazing job and fulfilling the role of middle school captains. Next, I'd like to introduce you to our Assistant Principal of Curriculum, Christy Harvey, to discuss the opportunities available to your child in Year 7. Good evening, everybody. My name is Christy Harvey, and I'm the Assistant Principal of Curriculum at Hazel Glen College. I'm going to give you a brief overview of what to expect in terms of curriculum when your child starts Year 7 next year at Hazel Glen College. Next slide, Tom. Thank you. Uh, curriculum and pedagogy. So teachers at Hazel Glen College establish a holistic approach to teaching and learning. And we draw on the Victorian teaching and learning model and the framework for improving student outcomes. We are well versed in the latest research and developments in 21st century learning, curriculum, assessment and reporting, and pedagogy, which is how we teach. Our teachers work in collaborative teams to plan curriculum that is engaging, challenging, purposeful and suited to the individual needs of our students. Next slide, Tom. So subjects that your child will study in year seven. So you can see these that have been displayed on the screen. Students will have five periods per day and they run for 60 minutes each and we run off a 10 day timetable. So the number of sessions that's allocated to each subject can be seen on the screen. Students have already had the opportunity to choose between their language subject, so either Mandarin or Italian, and also for performing arts, they would have chosen between doing music or drama for next year. We also have food technology and performing arts, but these run for one semester only. Assessment and reporting. So we use a variety of methods um, to provide feedback to students and also to parents on how their child is progressing across all of their subjects. So this includes interim reports that go out at the end of term one and term three that talks about your child's work habits in the classroom. So how they're collaborating with their peers, cooperation, attitude to learning, home learning, whether they're keeping up with their home learning for that particular subject and their organisational skills. We also have semester reports that will come out twice a year as well. This will give you more detailed information on how your child is tracking against the curriculum. Further to this, we have three-way conferences, which allows you to meet with the teacher um, for the different, uh, different teachers for the subjects that your child participates in to find out how they're going. Further to this, we actually also provide ongoing formal feedback to students and parents on key assessment tasks that they complete throughout the term. So this ensures that you're well informed in the progress and growth your child is making in each subject throughout the year. And this will be accessed on Compass, which I will talk about a little bit later. Differentiation. So middle school recognises and caters to the individual needs of each student. 
We use data to inform our plan, which allows for students to be catered for based on their own individual and their unique learning needs. When necessary, we will modify curriculum for, for students based on those specific needs, and that might look different for different areas in a, in a subject. So for example, they may need some modification, you know, for multiplication in maths, but maybe not so much when they're doing geometry. Uh, we also write individual learning plans for students who do have those extra, extra needs, both um, whether it needs to be modified or whether they need to be extended. And we also provide plenty of opportunities for extension and acceleration. Next slide, Tom. Home learning. So the kids will be very disappointed to hear this, but home learning um, is an expectation in year seven for their core subjects. So the purpose of home learning is to create connections between school and home and to support the learning that is happening in the classroom. A critical part of the home learning expectations is independent reading. So you can see from the infographic that is displayed on the screen, the difference that 20 minutes of reading can have on your child. So 20 minutes of reading on their school nights can have a huge impact on their academic growth. So research states that students re who read for 20 minutes per night are likely to score better than 90% of their peers. This data is powerful in demonstrate, demonstrating the importance reading has on our students and how supporting your child to read at home can have a significant impact on their success. Digital technologies. So dig digital technologies is a huge part of Hazel Glen College. Students are required to have their own iPad and they will use that in a variety of different ways. So this includes access, accessing their textbooks, using Compass and many Google apps such as Gmail, Google Classroom, Google Sites, Google Docs and Google Sheets. So I, I would assume that many students through the process of remote learning have probably gained some new skills in using these digital technologies. So it will be great to sort of reinforce these, these techno technology skills once the students are back on site. Students will learn to collaborate with their peers through live documents, they will create presentations, movies and so much more. All students do require an iPad that supports iOS 13 and is a 32 gigabyte model or more. So Compass. So Compass is the digital communication and management pl platform used by students, staff and parents. So it allows students and parents to access timetables, communicate between teachers, parents and students, record attendance, consent and pay for events and excursions, access reports. So the reports that I was talking about before in terms of interim semester reports are all accessed through Compass as well as those ongoing key assessment um, results that you will be able to access throughout the year as well. Um, so there's lots of different things and plenty more that you will learn about um, um, as the year progresses. I'd now like to hand back to Tom, who's going to go through um, the information that will come out in our information pack. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. I know that was a, a lot of information and um, at the end of the week, we're going to be sending out the information pack that contains everything that we've covered and um, a little bit more information as well. So as you can see there, there'll be information around the uniform guidelines, price lists, bus registration, state schools relief information, technology overview, the subject information. Um, for students or for families who haven't um, yet registered to the college, um, please contact the middle school through mstransition at hazelandcollege.com. The fee structure and stationary list will also be emailed out at a later date. And I guess the, the big one that people are wanting to know, so day one for year seven students will be Thursday, the 28th of January, 2021. Uh, at the moment, orientation day is not yet possible due to COVID, but we are looking at alternatives to see how we can support the transition back uh, into on-site learning here at the college. For further information, you can also access the college website here you'll find information about the college, middle school and the year seven program itself. Um, and specifically on there, there is a middle school handbook which has more information around all of these topics as well. That concludes our presentation. Uh, I'd now like to uh, move on to the Q&A section. Um, so thank you for listening and any questions that you have posted throughout the presentation will be answered now. First question is directed to you, Kim. So my child has high anxiety 
when would they actually get the opportunity to visit the college for this transition? Right, well, that's a different answer this year to what it would have been in previous years. Unfortunately, as you just heard at this stage, it looks like we won't be able to have our statewide orientation day. And at the moment, with so many things changing from day to day and week to week, we need to follow the department guidelines on when students are allowed to be on site from different places that aren't our students. As soon as we do have some guidelines and approval for students to visit on site, we will most certainly be looking into that as well when that can occur. We will set that up. In the meantime, there is an opportunity to meet with us if your child does have anxiety and you would like to discuss some specific concerns with us in the information pack, you'll see the opportunity to be able to arrange a meeting to discuss your specific concerns and we would encourage you to do so. Um, but as soon as we can get some students in for some school visits, we would love to have the opportunity to have them here. It's just very difficult to give a timeline right now and when that might happen. Thanks, Kim. Uh, next question is for you, Carolyn. My child is interested in attending the ADA or the Athlete Development Academy. When will the testing for this occur? Yeah, thanks, Tom. Just like Kim said, unfortunately, due to COVID, we can't have um, students visit at the school. Um, and so you will, you, if you have applied for the ADA, um, Mr. Crowley will be sending you an email tomorrow and it has all of the details of what we'll be doing um, in place of traditional testing at the college. So that includes um, you'll have a weekly video to complete. Um, we have different challenges and different tests to do to send in by the end of the week. And then if by December we still can't get you back here, then uh, Mr. Crowley will be going out to your primary school and doing some testing um, on that site. Thanks, Tom. Great. Uh, Kim, another one for you. So what happens when bullying takes place and the behaviour is negative behaviour towards another student that affects their self-esteem and confidence? How is this handled at the college? Yeah, the first thing I'll say about bullying is I'm not going to lie and say we don't have bullying. I don't think that there's any school in the country that can say that they don't have bullying, but it's how we respond to it. We do have a number of programs. So through PEP, our personal enrichment program, and through our health program and home group program, we do have a number of um, anti-bullying and resilience uh, programs and curriculum that we, we have in the classroom for students about how to respond and the impact and effects of that. Um, as well as that, we if there is a bullying situation that occurs, we are very quick to respond to it and find out exactly what's going on. And we have mediation. Uh, we might have some mediation. We might have some restorative conversations. Um, the key to it is that we know about it. Sometimes a bullying issue comes up and it's been going on for a long, long time. And it may have happened out of school or social media and, and we don't know about it. So the key is that the teachers are informed so that we, can we can't address what we don't know. So we ask students and if students don't feel comfortable that parents let us know if there is an issue that's affecting your child's um, anxiety, self-esteem, confidence and making them, I talked about a safe and secure environment. Uh, if they're not feeling that, we need to know about it straight away so that we can get onto it. So please keep us informed. But as I said, we do have a number of programs uh, throughout our curriculum that we address uh, bullying and we are on top. If we need to put consequences in, we will, but we do have those processes that we work through if there are those instances. Thanks, Kim. Christy, this one's for you. In terms of academic activities, does the college offer programs or teaching subjects that incorporate jobs and careers for the future? Yep, thank you, Tom. So incorporating jobs and careers for the future, it does become a lot more specific as students move up into the senior years, but there is a lot that we do do in middle school. So we have a program called PEP, which is a personal enrichment program. So within that um, program, students will learn, um, you know, how to work as teams. They'll work, learn their work habit skills, organisation, working in teams, collaborating with their peers, 
um, they'll, you know, foster those metacognition skills that they need to, to have in the workforce in the future. Further to that, we have elective specific in English and mathematics in year eight. Um, we also have our STEAM facility with a science lab, which is just absolutely amazing. So to have the students go into the into science labs, so those students who have that interest in science will be getting prepared for those future jobs just by working in that lab. Um, further to that, we have um, design and construction and, and so much more. Um, fashion design is a very popular one um, that many, many students engage in as they move up into the senior years. Um, but of, obviously, this, those specifics for those jobs and careers will come more in subjects that they will study further along. Wherever possible, we try and relate our teaching to real world examples so the students can actually see the purpose in why they are learning specific things. So for example, you know, if we're starting algebra in year seven, which our year sevens do, we, we really try to get the students to understand why they need to know this. Perhaps they wanna work in construction, right? So they need to know how to you know, work out an unknown angle of something. To do that, they need algebra. So we certainly constantly have that in the back of our minds when we are teaching. Thanks, Christy. Kim, um, can students request to be in home groups with friends? Yes, it's a short answer, but it, it is a little bit more complex than that. Um, they can request it, but we need to remember that it's just a request. There's a lot of things that are taken into account when we actually put the home groups together. It depends on the electives, it depends on you know, whether they've chosen performing art, which performing art and which language they have chosen. Um, it depends on whether their previous teachers have said that they would be a, a good working mix or not and the recommendation on that. Um, and it depends on a few other balances in numbers and, and genders in different classes that we need. So we do try it with our requests, um, but we, Please understand we can't guarantee that. Um, please trust that we are working well to put your child in the class that best supports their learning. And the reality is when they come into year seven, the number of new friends um, and new friendships that they will develop is amazing. So um, while it's, it's we try, it can't always be guaranteed. Thanks, Kim. Another one for you. So what support do children get when they suffer high anxiety? I've gone through some of those structures before and it's probably a two-pronged approach. So we do, as I spoke about before, through our health program that students participate in weekly right through um, from their five and six into seven and eight and above, we do look at things like that about triggers, about strategies to manage and about supports that we can put in place. As we, as I went through earlier, there's also the structures that I talked about. So they might want to approach their home group teacher or their year level leader, or just, it doesn't matter if it's just a teacher they connect with, someone they can go to for support. It could be their, their maths teacher, their PE teacher. Um, but we do have some, a very well-resourced wellbeing team that can provide some strategies depending on the need and the level for the individual student at that point in time, uh, whether it's working with year level leaders to put some strategies and options and modifications in place sometimes, whether there's some referrals to the wellbeing team for some support and um, strategies there as well. We have, it's, quite complex to probably answer um, in a quick sentence like this, but depending on the needs of the child, we have a whole range of different approaches, strategies and supports that we can use. But the main thing is they are definitely here in those that I spoke about earlier between the wellbeing team and the year level team that we can support students. Thanks, Kim. Um, Christy, is there an accelerated program at Hazel Glen College? We don't run a specific accelerated program. However, we do differentiate within the classroom. So as I mentioned earlier, teachers will use data. So they will use formative assessments that students will do in the classroom and they'll use that data to identify the needs of each individual student. So if we've got a student who is excelling in, for example, um, maths in year seven, we will be able to see that through our data, also through previous reports we would have gained from the primary school. And then we can adjust our planning to 
suit that individual students need. So they will be provided with work at their point of need. So if they're working six to 12 months or more above that expected level, then, then they will be catered to those individual needs within the classroom. So sometimes it might be working you know, one-on-one -on -one with the teacher, or it could be in groups as well, if there are a number of students with the same goals, um, but that will be differentiated within the classroom. Great, thank you. Uh, what sports programs are running at Hazel Glen College? So I might take this one as a PE teacher. Um, basically the school represents, um, it was represented by a number of different sporting teams. So it covers um, pretty much any sport you can think of. We had students go out to state level for basketball, volleyball, chess, um, any sport that um, students have an interest in. Um, Mitch Crowley, the head of sport, encourages them to present to him. So I know that he's had um, students come and speak to him about motocross and interest in that. Um, and he's looked into the opportunities that are available for them there and, and, and made those sort of programs happen. So certainly we offer a wide variety of sports in terms of um, competing externally. And within our PE programs, we try and offer as many different varieties of sports to build the different skills um, and teamwork capabilities within our students as possible. Um, so this is done through CPEP programs and um, competitions that also contribute towards our house points system as well. Uh, Kim, one for you, will there be children attending the Great Victorian Bike Ride next year? Hope so, if it's running. Uh, the Great Victorian Bike Ride is a tradition that we've had at the college. I haven't participated myself, but I know that we have had students attend that previously. Um, if we can get students who are interested, there's always teachers that are keen to do the Great Victorian Bike Ride with them. There is some planning and preparation. They can't just turn up and expect to do the Great Victorian Bike Ride. We don't do the whole part. We do a leg of the bike ride. Um, yes, we would love that if we have the students that are prepared to put in the pre-work and do the bike ride and we're allowed to do it at that point in time, absolutely, we would love the Great Victorian Bike Ride to run. Thanks, Kim. Uh, I might take this next one as well. So we're looking at uh, running programs on cyber safety. So this is something that is um, embedded into our curriculum within our health and PEP programs. So um, students look at the impacts of cyber, cyber uh, bullying and, and cyber safety online. It's also something where we try and get external people to come into the, the college to present to students as well. So our year level leaders do a fantastic job at liaising with our police youth workers and getting them to come in and speak to the students around cyber safety and how to protect themselves online. We hope that we haven't missed any of your questions. Um, and if we have, please send us an email and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Um, and also this information and this presentation will be emailed out and made available to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a lovely evening.